Hello, and welcome to the Morning Scoop for Wednesday, July 14th. This is your daily fix. The Minnesota game is in 50 days, and the game against that team up north is in 137 days. Tony and Tom are out today, so in replace is not Tony and not Tom with over the Buckeye Scoop. Yeah. Uh, hi, we're, we're Jared and Kyle, uh, better known as uh, not Tony and not Tom, uh, filling in for the morning scoop. Uh, we are normally the host of the Buckeye Sloopcast, which is a logo that is both over my shoulder and currently on my chest. Uh, but yeah, we're doing the morning scoop today. So uh, we're, we're very excited to be doing that. Uh, we know that a lot of you might be seeing us for the very first time. We also do a podcast here on the uh, Buckeye Scoop podcasting network. So we're here where you, if you know how to find the morning scoop, you already know how to find us. And if, if uh, 20 minutes feels like not enough, uh, you, we have a huge catalog of stuff you can go back through. So with all that being said, uh, we were just sort of like, okay, we're, we're doing the morning scoop. What do we do? So we reached out to the members of our discord server and basically said, okay, everyone over unders for the 2021 football season. And uh, the members of our Discord server stepped up big. Uh, in fact, we have way too many questions. So that's fun. Uh, so better, better, better too many than too few. So we're going to have to work through these selectively. Uh, but yeah, let's, <laughs> well, we're going to try and answer a bunch of them, Stuart. We're not going to get to them all. Uh, so Kyle, you want to, you want to take the, take the reins here and what, what, what are we doing? What, which question are we doing first? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So we did promise Tony, we will keep this within the interval or close to it. So we will, <laughs> we'll do our best here. So, all right, let's, let's jump right into it here. So a um, couple of, couple of questions right off the front here from one of our listeners. Um, he goes by the name of gangland in our discord uh, over unders here. So six and a half touchdowns, rushing touchdowns, for Travion Henderson, here's a running back incoming freshman here that we have high hopes for. Yeah. Six and a half touchdowns. Do you think, do you think that's a good number? Do you think you're going to get more or less than that for the year? I want to say over because I do feel like he's probably the first guy to get carries in junk time. Mm -hmm. Probably he and Evan Pryor. So I, I want to say with a guy with his talent level, who's going to get a bunch of junk carries and has a good chance of being the starter by the end of the year, especially if we're counting postseason into this. Uh, yeah, I, I can see him going over six. The only, the only thing I, that makes me hesitant is just the sheer number of running backs and how much those carries are going to get split up this year. No, I agree. I, I believe that this offense is just going to be rolling along. They're going to be focusing too much on the the exponential amount of great receivers that Ohio State has. I think Henderson's going to have a great year as his first year here at Ohio State. So I, I definitely agree with you, Jared and uh, Stuart in a discord to push, push that, um, <laughs> that over under uh, interceptions for the o Ohio State secondary four and a half. Uh, very disappointing last year for the secondaries. Yeah. Uh, four and a half seems very low it's to very me. Low. So I, I would definitely say higher than that. Yeah, I'm going over. It's just, we, we have a full season this year. Hopefully we have, um, I, I think Ohio State's going to be up big a lot, which means the other teams are going to be passing in obvious passing situations a lot, which means there'll be plenty of opportunities for interceptions. I think Ohio State's safeties at the very least have a really nice year, which will lead to more intercepts. I'm going over. Yeah, over four and a half. All right. Uh, let's let's go to the first game here, Jared. The first game against Minnesota, as I stated before, is in 50 days. Ohio State scores five passing touchdowns against Minnesota. Yeah, that question is from Buckeye Zach. Buckeye Zach. Um, I guess he's just putting it at five. Um, specifically passing touchdowns, I'm going to go under because I just I'm not going to gamble one way or the other on how those touchdowns are going to come in. And especially if it's five, that's a lot. So I'm just I'm going to go under simply because you just like I said, you just never know how you're going to get those into the end zone. 
I agree. Five passing touchdowns that first game definitely seems excess or not excessive, but definitely seems very high. And like Ohio game. State should beat Minnesota. I, I like, I have no, but it's, it's the same time. They're not a Mac school, so it's not going and it's going to be a brand new quarterback, uh, a lot of brand new pieces in place. It's probably a lot to expect Ohio State's offense to be at 100 percent from the get against a quality Big Ten team. Mm-hmm, yeah, so here, here's a here's a here's a tough one, Jared. Here's a tough one. We're going to talk about that team up north. Uh, Buckeye Zach also asks us the team up north over under four games that the team up north will win. So right. looking at their schedule here, Jared, it's a, it's 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 over, but it's not it's not a slam dunk. No, their 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 games here: Western Michigan, Washington, um, um. Northern Iowa, not Northern, sorry, Northern Indiana, Rutgers, Wisconsin, Nebraska, Northwestern, Michigan State, Indiana, Penn State, Maryland, and Ohio State. Okay, maybe, yeah, maybe they should win three of their first four games there. But after that, that's tough. It's really tough. Yeah, but there. So yeah they, they could probably get the win with Michigan State. But yeah, four is right there I, I like that number at four so if you put four over, and a half yeah. if, you, if you put that half there i still might take the over but man that's that's not that's it's it says a lot about the michigan team this year yeah i mean it's definitely over but it's not nearly as much of a slam dunk as michigan fans would like you to think it is but mm-hmm, it's definitely yeah. over yep uh Speaking of wins here, so here's a, here's an interesting one from it goes by our, the uh, name in our Discord, Cousin Jay. Hi, Cousin Jay. Uh, over under 22 and a half conference wins by a combination of Ohio State, Alabama, and Clemson. So uh, the ACC plays nine conference games, yes? Yep. SEC only plays eight conference games. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the Big Ten plays nine conference games. This seems like a slam dunk to me. I I agree. Um, I, I think I think twenty two is or twenty two and a half rather is a is a bit too low. Um, but at the same time, and I think there's another question. Uh, I believe it was from Florida Buckeye. Um, over under on the number of teams, the number of these teams being in the playoffs: Alabama, Ohio State, Clemson, two and a half. I think we're sort of roundabout trying to ask the same question here, right? Does this trio, which appears to be the, the cutoff point for tier S, does this trio continue to be just chugging along into the playoffs? Uh, I, and it's a great question because on one hand, of course they are. They're the three S tier teams. They're the three lone S tier teams. So of course they they're all going to the playoffs, right? Well, let me ask you this. Well, Jared. let me let, let me ask you. They all three this. lost their quarterbacks. Well, let, let me ask you this: Do we know is Notre Dame staying independent this year, or are they staying with the ACC? Well, they still have the scheduling agreement with the ACC, but I I do not believe they're in the ACC this year. No. Okay, because. I would take the over here just because if you take out Notre Dame in the, in the ACC, like they were last year because of everything that happened last season, I don't see anybody in the ACC that can really compete with Clemson outside of Notre Dame. I agree. Yeah. So I w- I'd set that over then because I don't, I don't see Alabama really slipping up this year. How state is stacked and no one's going to really compete against Clemson in the ACC. So I would take the over at two and a half for those three teams. Yeah, I and I would too. I just think it's a really good question because all three of those teams lost key components off of their squads last year. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. And, yeah. Yeah. But all right, they uh, all three we, reload. Yes. Uh, let's see here. Moving on to... Some more, some more numbers here, Jared. Over under, so over under three thousand four hundred ninety nine 
0.5 yards passing yards for Ohio State starter. That that had to have been Stewart, right? Nope, that was from Austin Formation. What? What was? Wait, what was the question? Oh no. Oh, okay, I see it now. He he likes to give those weird points just because that's his thing. He does. No, there, he there's there's another one that's coming up here for me. Okay. I'm uh, sorry. Can you say it again? Over under 3,500 yards passing for for the Ohio State starter. I'm going to say under, and I'm going to say under, I think, because they're going to run the ball a lot this year. And I think that there's a decent possibility that there's more of a quarterback split as far as snaps goes than than we like to think there is, even if that just means a a quick pull on the starter, even if that just means occasional series. Um, and also just 35 is a lot, 35 is a lot. So um, I, I just, I see this being one of the first, and not that Ryan Day has been the head coach all that long, but this might be like the first run first Ryan mm-hmm. Day offense we've seen under his head coaching tenure. Yep. All right. Uh, some no, some more numbers here. Um, these next ones are from Gangland again here. 12 touchdowns for Olave. Ooh, that's a lot. That is a lot. Uh, I'm going to go with under just because of this sheer number of wide receivers, wide receivers there are there. Yeah, I mean, I just I, I think that they're going to have a deep uh, if, if you're not a regular listener to the Ohio State or to the the Buckeye Sloopcast, we just did a depth chart prediction on our previous episode, which uh, you can find on the Buckeye Scoop Radio Network. And just we were talking about the wide receivers. Like we see a six person wide receiver rotation and that doesn't count G. Scott Jr., uh, his family, by the way, in our thoughts right now. Um, And that doesn't include Jeremy Ruckert. And some of the other pass catchers who we will see, you know, from the tight end position uh, position and potentially from the running back position as well. Yeah, it's it's a lot. Uh, 12's a lot. I just see so many wide receivers getting so many catches and 12's just a lot. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite sets that's gone very underappreciated here. One and a half is the number one and a half return touchdowns just any returns punt kickoff returns one and a half they've not done great in the with this in recent years um i i'm just gonna go under yeah i would go under like if you put at 0.5 maybe but yeah, just like what you said, Jared, they they haven't had a return touchdown in a very long time. I don't really seeing that with with all the new with not new, but with all the rule changes with the kickoff return and how everybody is doing punts right now. It's very difficult to be able to get a good return right now. So I, I definitely would say under here. All right, Kyle from uh, Zach Easel over under two national championships in the next four years. So let's, let's make that one in it. No, let's keep it at two over under two. It, uh, I think, I, I think this goes back to some things that we've mentioned in a couple of our episodes um, a few weeks ago is, is the head coach over at Alabama still Nick Saban? Yeah, it is. Okay, yeah, that's that's going to be the difficult part of it. I know that Ohio State has had some stellar, stellar recruiting classes, but Can you I, know who's, who's always been that half step ahead? Yeah. In the recruiting, it's been Alabama. As much as we want to be here and say, nope, Ohio State's going to win four of the next four championships yeah. here, and I would love that just as the next Buckeye fan. I- I almost feel like I'd be willing to say two, not three, because if the over under is at two, then to say over, you'd have to say three. And I'm just I'm not going to say three in the next four years. That's ludicrous. Mm -hmm. But even if even if the question was actually one and a half. Even if we even if we modify it and say one and a half. 
understand that Ohio State has won two national titles in the first 20 seasons of this millennia. That's two in 20 years as opposed to two in four years. Mm -hmm. And yes, I do think Ohio State's recruiting better now than they've ever recruited before. Yes, I think NIL will exaggerate that for Ohio State. Yes, I do think Nick Saban is in his final years at Alabama and that will help. Yes, I do believe Ryan Day is actually taking this team to higher places than Urban Meyer took it. If you wanted to say one and a half in five years, now we're talking about maybe getting me to go over. Not four years, not over under at two. Five years, over under at one and a half. Now you're tempting me to pick over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's it's very tough. Now you take out Nick Saban. I definitely would feel a little bit more comfortable, but with Nick Saban there, it's always tough. You you got to run the, the, through the national championship through Nick Saban's Alabama. Kyle, speaking of, uh, Brawley from our Discord, seasons Saban has left coaching over under three and a half. Over. I, I, would, I would put that at like five and a half. I put that at five and a half. So I would say over. I don't know, man. Um, how old is Saban? 70 now? Is that right? Anyone in the live chat want to help me out there? Saban 70? Well, He's uh, getting up look there. Here. Yeah, he will be 70 this October. He's. Did you know, Jared? He's a, he's a Halloween. He's a Halloween guy. I, no, no, I didn't. Um, okay. When when does it when does hold on I need to look something up Kyle um, Ohio State versus Bama home I think that's in 2028 okay so 2028 would be uh, 2027 and 2028 hold on hold on yeah. oh ad blocker yeah I have an ad blocker get over it <laughs> um let's see said da, 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 da. I need to know which games in Okay, um, the 2027 I, game is in Columbus. Yes. Uh, so that would put, so 2027, that's what, six games into the future or six seasons into the future? I'm, I'm, all, all I'm saying is, is that he won't come, he's not coming to Columbus. He's now going to play be, five years. He's going to play five years and then the new coach is going to be the one who's going to have to come to Columbus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nick Saban is not coming to Columbus. I promise <laughs> you this. Yeah. Um. Three right. and a half, I think, is a really good number because I do kind of think the number is probably four. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think three and a half is a great number. I'm going to go over, but it's 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 a great number. I think. Yeah. All right, uh, Stuart. Here, here you go, Stuart. Here's your question: Over under how many names Jared and Kyle will get wrong with the name game? Oh. The, it, the number is set to 30.3264. Uh, just, it's over. I don't. I didn't even hear what the number was. If, if you're not a regular <laughs> listener to the Buckeye Sloop cast, um, uh, during, our, during the game week, uh, Stuart will send me the toughest pronunciations on the other team and force me to say them out loud, and it doesn't go well most of the time. Well, especially if we have to do the Oregon game. I'm sure... I'm sure that one's going to be fun. Well, well we're going to have to do the Oregon game. Yes. Now, the yep. good news is, is that we've had more uh, Pacific Islanders come to Columbus lately. So my practice is up. I'm getting All right. better. All right. We got a few more here as we are coming up on time here, though. So we'll just do just a couple more here. I want to make sure I get a hold of everybody who put in a question here. So we have one from Zek Isol. Uh, over under the amount of night games this year for Ohio State, it is it set at five and a half. Oh, uh, under Fox wants Ohio State playing those noon games. Absolutely, yes. That's I, they they want to they want to take out College Game Day, and the way they take out College Game Day is by putting the Ohio State whatever their most premier game is, which most of the time is going to be Ohio State. It's the most valuable property that Fox Sports has in the college football world. 
they're going to want to put that right on after the pregame show because they want the big noon kickoff to take audience away from game day. This is their strategy. Mm -hmm. It's a reverse lead in. I, I'd put this at like two and a half, two, three games is what I think is going to be the night this year. for And, and again, regular season. Yes, yes. Caveat regular season. Yep. Just so we're clear. All right. All right let's do one last one here. Uh, Nomad. I don't think we did one with Nomad yet. Um, Nomad asks, what are the over under number of conference wins? Oh, no, we're not going to do this. This one's going to be way too long. He asked a number of conference wins for each Big Ten school. Oh, that that that's a that's an August podcast. That's an entire podcast episode, my guy. That's <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Well, we will hear in August. We're going to go through um, each conference. We're gonna we're gonna give our rating and our grade how well we think each conference is going to do, as well as each team in the Big Ten too. So uh, uh, be sure to check out from that. Austin if we're be sure to for... check out that episode um, coming up here in in one of our August episodes. Uh, here's a good one from Austin. Uh, over under the 2022 recruiting class ranking of two and a half. Under. Un yeah, better. Better. Yeah, one or two. Under, or over, or under, uh, better, better. <laughs> yes. All right. All right. Kyle, I think okay. that's it. That That is uh, us at uh, about 21 and a half minutes. So just a little bit over as is tradition. Yes. So Absolutely. Uh, I do appreciate everybody for listening in to um, the morning scoop with not Tom and not uh, Tony. This, I'm and, Jared. Kyle, we, we have a, not, a lot of new listeners here, buddy. I'm yes. Jared. That's Kyle. Uh, we're the Buckeye Sloop cast. Again, if you already are watching the morning scoop, you can probably find us pretty easily. We're on the Buckeye Scoop Radio Network, uh, and you can tune in and listen to us in a much longer form uh, every Monday morning. And we add a Friday morning episode during the season. We might be adding more of uh, this upcoming season, but no promises on that yet. So, um, Kyle, I think that's the end of the episode. Yep. I appreciate everyone for listening in and we will catch you all later. Peace.